my hard life to a new land I became a mail order bride I just think I have such a wide range of interests Feathers flew the chickens to officials didn't know what to do Young boys chased hands escaped this fight to twin tightly laced Funeral frow smash I'm originally from New York City and I moved from the big city to rural west central Minnesota Funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public. I think I got started in music in the back seat of the car during family vacations when I would sing to myself at about five years old and my parents would tell me to shut up. So um, I think that might have inspired me to continue singing. I was very involved in theater in, um, in middle school and high school. And then I, I did a lot of musicals and started singing with some friends' bands in high school and, and then uh, my own band in college. And so it has continued from there. <laughs> Zombie was the kingpin of trouble To others a prophet of the farmer's struggle Hey, see, tell me Paddled his dreams and went from nothing to someone to nobody He started farming experimental fields Promised his investors record crop yields When weather and the market turned investment to loss He started campaigning for the farmer's cause His booming voice made heat grates shake Startled, discouraged, farmers awake Stumped for votes in Dakota polls Like a soapbox preacher saving souls Charged farmers nine dollars each Took post data checks from his Ford Model T. A.C. Townley was a salesman with a creed and his vision formed the nonpartisan league. The next big thing the farmer needs is a way to make a difference that will actually succeed. Forget what you've seen, this is a new dream. Trust me, I truly believe. It's our biggest chance yet, so step up and place your bet on the nonpartisan league. But did Townley embezzle their collection plate? They put him in jail as a slap on a wrist When they caught him telling men not to enlist He sold insurance when he was released Cause the NPL was almost deceased Libel suits brought him to his knees Deep in debt from the legal fees His silver tongue could still cast spells So he sold millions in empty oil wells Promised Minnesota economic expansion But people wouldn't put him in the governor's mansion He hawked tonics made from dirt Became a faith healer to cure all hurt Gave one last speech and ran out of luck Crashed his car right into a truck The next big thing the farmer needs Is a way to make a difference that will actually succeed Forget what you've seen, this is a new dream Trust me, I truly believe It's our biggest chance yet So step up and place your bet on the non-partisan league Vision bigger than North Dakota, dreams larger than Minnesota. Saw the diamond in the coal, imagined oil in the dust bowl, believed that grain would fill the mill, and utopia was just over the hill. The next big thing the farmer needs is a way to make a difference that will actually succeed. Forget what you've seen, this is a new dream. Trust me, I truly believe. It's our biggest chance yet, so step up and place your bet on the non-partisan league. I have this little habit. I love to write songs about oddballs and rather unique events that happen in history. And I have a whole collection of songs about people and events um, that I like to think of as too fascinating for the history books. 
This next song is about a man named Herman Fink from Wadena, Minnesota, who opened a grocery store in town uh, during the Depression, which was a terrible time to open a grocery store because no one had any money. So he decided that the way to bring people into his store was to come up with a marketing plan. And the marketing plan he came up with was to offer three gifts for three Saturdays in a row. And what he chose to be the free gift and the chaos that ensued in Wadena are the subject of this next song. Herman Fink was new in town. He built a grocery on the corner and settled down to bring in customers and make it pay. He offered free gifts for three Saturdays. At first, people crowded in groups and Hens rained down from the sky. Feathers flew the chickens to officials, didn't know what to do. Young boys chased hens as they fist fights between tightly laced. Mrs. Brown smashed to the ground, two car windshields were knocked out. Ladies fussing, gentlemen cussing, and bird waste was everywhere mussing. That week, Fink saw the town's ire rise. He decided he needed a different prize. He replaced the hens from the week before with the bird he thought would be a better score. The customers thought they knew what to expect. They came with boxes to collect. But leghorn cockerels can run and fly, and pretty soon everything went awry. Feathers flew the roosters to officials, watched them take to roofs. Cockerels raised people, chased to find the birds and get a taste. There next morning on every store running, cockerels dropped their birdie warnings. Thinks that people shouldn't fuss, but too many feathers had been mussed, and the people called for a Herman Fink bust. Though gentlemen sniggered and the ladies it triggered a new chicken safety brigade. Herman disgraced, surrendered his place, and gave up his bird-based scheme. Birds cooed and cawed, Fink hemmed and hawed, and finally compromised for the last week. On the third Saturday, Fink let down his fans. When from the roof it rained beach balls instead of bird contraband. No feathers flew, it was balls Fink threw. Officials had nothing to do. No birds misplaced, of fist fights, no trace, and no one left Wadena disgraced. No ladies fussing or gentlemen cussing. No one wiping off bird mussing. Wadena settled back down to be a quiet town where boring is better than too many birds around. But we can still remember when Feathers flew the chickens to officials, didn't know what to do. Young boys chased hens, escaped this fights between tightly laced. Mrs. Brown smashed to the ground, two car windshields were knocked out. Ladies fussing, gentlemen cussing, and bird waste was everywhere mussing. Now Adina settled back down to be a quiet town where boring is better than too many birds around. Got a 
a steamboat on the Red, Red River. Winnipeg unloads, pool tables, printing presses, flower paper plows, fancy dresses, whistle screech, paddles pang, time to fill the hold, boat returns to Moorhead with furs and buffalo robes. Place your bets on the first spring day, the steamboat's on the red, steamboat around the bend, it's a steamboat on the red. Whistle on ahead Got a steamboat on the Red, Red River Steamboat around the bend It's a steamboat on the Red Whistle on ahead Got a steamboat on the Red, Red River Steamboat on the Red, Red River Steamboat on the In the boundary waters in northern Minnesota. I live the life I want and I wouldn't change it one iota. Lived here most of my life here on a lake, a lake called that. I live in mostly happy, mostly alone. I'm a strong, strong woman in my wilderness home. And I'm all about root beer, root beer, root beer. Winter freezes a lake to ice. I cut the ice from the lake with a knife. Stack the ice in the ice house and huge ice melts. Each cube weighs over 100 pounds. Cover the ice with sawdust. I cover the sawdust with moss. People come and help me. But I'm the boss of my root beer. Root beer. Root beer. Root beer. I carry hundreds of glass bottles over hundreds of miles of trail. I wash hundreds of root beer bottles in Knife Lake with a brush and pail. I draw gallons of lake water to pour in vats of root beer mix. I pour root beer in root beer bottles for canoeists on their summer kicks. I sell them root beer. Root beer. Root beer. Root beer. When the law says I gotta move Cause my home's now a park I fight the law and I stand my mark But when I don't win the fight My friends stand up to the government's might Now I can live here all of my years I just can't sell it Some folks try and find me, some come accidentally, but they are all covered with sweat and they'll drink anything they can get. Two rupees per customer, 20 minutes or less. Why I have those rules, I bet you can guess there won't be enough root beer. Root beer. Root beer. Root beer. I love to write shows that include my songs about oddballs in history. One is called Minnesota's Ordinarily Unsung Concert, about Minnesota characters. And the second show is called Oive is Jewish for Ufta, about Jewish immigrants to the rural upper Midwest. This next song is from Oive is Jewish for Ufta, and it's about a Jewish-Russian immigrant named Rachel Kaloff who came to North Dakota. 
Her story is very unique because she came as a mail order bride. A young Jewish girl in a Russian powder keg abandoned by my father, my mother was dead. Unwanted but to care for my brother's five took another woman's passport for a one-way ride from a hard life to a new land i became a mail order bride first saw my husband on the new york dock come to take me to his north dakota farm Separate births on the endless train We disembarked on a featureless plain Hardland for a new life As a mail order bride The women sang Men beat time on tin pans My mother-in-law put a flower sack on my wedding day I was blind at least they couldn't see me cry new land same hard life for a mail order bride one room winter shack with my husband's parents brother and wife chickens under the bed calf in the corner crew I beg the gray skies for winter to end Hard life in a new land Just another mail order bride Women sang, men be time on tin pans My mother-in-law put a flower sack over my head On my wedding day I was blind my life more times than I can count I defended you then and I'll do it again I couldn't care less about the color of your skin your name should be known for your virtue to a woman not one of your own Chaska my true friend Chaska man among children safe in your teepee you put yourself between the bullets and me you sold your coat for our food you gave me a horse when I couldn't walk from my wounds you risked your life to keep us alive but my people's rage wouldn't let you survive we are alive because of you and your reward was the white man's news Chaska, my true friend Chaska, man among men You saved my life with no regard for your end Then you were hanged by my people for being my 
friend and an Indian. The more I spoke for you, the worse it went for you. The more I spoke of you, the less they believed. You refused to take my hand the last I saw you. You thought that I I moved to rural West Central Minnesota from New York City in 2007 because I had fallen in love with a man and uh, thankfully that worked out, we got married. But I moved from uh, the biggest city in this country to uh, a smaller town than I knew existed. Although I have a lot of international living experience, um, I had never experienced culture shock like I experienced going from New York City to New York Mills. My first visit to Minnesota and to New York Mills, Minnesota, was as a resident artist at the New York Mills Regional Cultural Center for one month. And that's how I met my husband, who uh, was on the board. And I came here to write my songs that are part of what I call my ordinarily unsung projects. So songs about oddballs and history and fascinating events.
monsters and heads Four hundred lost for a white man's gain Ojibwe oh, people never the same In an empty wigwam walls to flap Beaver will try to escape the trap White birch against black and sky When I'm following the subjects of my songs, I, I don't know where they're going to lead me, and so I have to just go where they take me, and different subjects take me in different places, so I have the opportunity to write across a wide variety of genres. I left the world with a pink slip in my hand It was back to the kitchen till Hormel gave me a chance He said, military lady drum for me military ladies find out what we can be we were a 60 service girl drum and bugle corps jc were melba we could do some more the drummers learned to dance then the new girl strode out and he gave him a chance he said you can perform and sell door to door so during the day we'd go store to store saying hey ho how do you like it hey ho Try it, spam and dinty more. Delicious canned meat galore. We got chili con carne, gonna twist your arm. So tonight, come out and give it a go. The Horn of the Road Caravan Orchestra Show. 35 cars, wet attention, catch it. We drive up in pairs, our dresses all matching. Comportment and style, 60 hours a week. Dance instructors keeping track of everything we eat. No ten lands can be seen. It's a small price to pay to live a service girl. The Hormel Girls Caravan Orchestra Show We broadcast on CBS from Hollywood and Vine Our scripts are written for us, we plug every Hormel line Five commercial breaks will tell you what you need to know about every Hormel product You'll hear it on our show We girls would be showing on a Saturday night Then we'd be sailing before every flight Driving two by two with a plastic bag full of dummy cans Sell the Hormel brand, Mr. Manager, how your product's moving The Hormel Girls Caravan Orchestra Show. Night, come out, give it a go. Hormel Girls Caravan Orchestra Show. I read a memoir of a man who had been a chaplain in the Yankee Army during the Civil War. And he was captured and uh, was an prisoner of war camp. And in his memoir, he told the story of these women who would come up to the prison and around a prison um, there was a line called the deadline and the deadline was where beyond which a prisoner would be shot dead now these southern women would come up to this deadline with food and clothing for prisoners who were barely being fed and uh, were very cold and they were doing this for enemy prisoners and um, the chaplain surmised that the reason these southern women were helping these men 
was because they had loved ones, husbands and brothers and sons and fathers who were in prison camps up north, and they were hoping against hope that the women up north would do the same for their loved ones. This song is about that, and it's dedicated to all of those people willing to cross enemy lines for the sake of humanity. This is called Deadline. I have five daughters and a little to spare Since my husband's been a prisoner down there I know he's hungry somewhere So for others I care If he sends me letters they don't arrive But they tell me he's still alive And that they'll treat him well Till the union prevails Here, soldier, take my hand I'll give you all that I can spare All I ask is your prayer That your woman will do the same For my man Up and down the deadline each day Some days they order me away And I make my retreat Just beyond their beat I hide my bundle under my shawl I wait to hear the captain's call I sneak in to help whom I can. Here, soldier, take my hand. I'll give you all that I can spare. All I ask is your prayer that your woman will do the same for my man. our enemies fall They're only men after all Hungry and frail Ragged and pale My husband could be yours Your son could be mine so please be gentle and kind out there on your deadline. Mm -hmm. Here, soldier, take my hand. I'll give you all that I can spare. All I ask is your prayer that your woman will do the same. Your woman will do the same. Woman will do the same for my men. Being here has given me the opportunity to get to know this culture and this landscape and the history here. And it also, Minnesota has been an amazing supporter of the arts with the new legacy amendment funding. And so I've had the opportunity to tap into that and do some very creative projects and work in schools and in libraries um, that I'm, I don't think I would have had the opportunity to do where I lived before. His grandfather was the great chief Red Wing. My husband was one of the men who built Minnesota, and my son was a hero in the Sioux uprising. Joe met me when he was married to wife number two. 
He nursed me back to health when I got shot. He moved in with me and had seven children. It took him 15 years to tie the knot. They wrote about my husband, my father, my son. But then, then they were done. So who was I? Who was I? Who was I? Oh, tell me something about my life. Tell me something mattered in my life. Lived in a world where there was Indian and white. Do you know if I was both or neither? Lived in a world where families were mixed, where marriages seemed business interests. I lived in a time of confusion. I saved myself by claiming Indian blood. You can learn my husband bought me a piano from New York. He had no chance to hear me play before he died. You can learn I was a woman of note years ago and that I lived till I was 85. They wrote about my husband, my father, my son. But then, then they Tell me something mattered in my life. Tell me something mattered in my life. One of my favorite stories of live performance is that I was performing in a town in Minnesota. I'm not going to reveal any names of people or towns here because I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Um, but what happened was I have a song in my Minnesota's Ordinarily Unsung concert about moonshine. It's about a bootlegger named Joseph Studer who made moonshine. And I performed it in a small town uh, in Minnesota, the show. And uh, one of the audience members came up to me afterwards and said, oh, have you ever tasted moonshine? And, and I hadn't. And I told him that. And he said, oh, that's such a pity. And I said, I know. I, I wish I could taste moonshine because I'm singing about it. And he goes, well, I have a friend. You know, I have a friend, my friend makes moonshine. And I was like, oh, well, too bad your friend isn't here and brought his moonshine. And he goes, yeah, too bad. Well, two days later, I had a, another performance in another town at a library. And uh, the head of the library comes up to me and said, you, you got a package in the mail. And I'm thinking, I don't live anywhere near here. How did I get a package in the mail here? Well, I open up this package and I discover in it a pint-sized Jägermeister bottle that was half filled with what I knew at that point was not Jägermeister, but rather moonshine. And there was a um, piece of notebook paper with one line <laughs> penciled on it and no signature. It just said, enjoy. <laughs> and I was like, all right. So I got my first taste of moonshine because uh, someone knew that I wanted it. <laughs> Barkeep, I see a bottle there I haven't seen in 
many a year. Scooters moonshine better than beer. The best brew in the land. They cheer the best brew in the land. 1920 prohibition decreed. No drinking was the law to eat. My crop failed. I was in need. Had a wife and ten kids to feed. Indeed, a wife and ten kids to feed. Moonshine, moonshine, the brew was mine. I made the best in the land. Moonshine, moonshine, illegal lifeline. Gave my family a hand. It was simple to make a still in a chop. Use a wash boiler with a copper top. Put a tube on it in the shop and weld the top to the pot. That's all you weld the top to the pot. Rye corn and yeast, raisins and prunes, apricots and sugar. Put it all in a clean oak barrel once used for vinegar. That was once used for vinegar. Moonshine, moonshine, the brew was mine. I made the best in the land. Moonshine, moonshine, illegal lifeline. Gave my family a hand. Lawmen would head our way, Sheriff Dan would call to betray. The feds are coming and planning a raid, so we'd move the still far away. We would, we'd hide the still far away. The piano was our whiskey cash, the feds once came to find our stash. To the piano, young Jenny did dash, she played till the feds left abashed. At twelve, played till the feds left abashed. Moonshine, moonshine, the brew was mine. I made the best in the land. My family a hand I don't really miss the danger and risk I don't really miss making brew But seeing that old Studer's bottle there I can't help remembering the smell in the air The sour stench of prohibition time As the mash fermented for our brew so fine as I made world-class moonshine As I made the Studer's moonshine the Studer's moonshine Moonshine, moonshine, the brew was mine I made the best in the land Moonshine, moonshine, illegal lifeline Gave my family a hand Civilian Conservation Corps is forgotten now. It's only lore, but our works remain to remind you when three and a half million men joined Roosevelt's tree army, built country and economy, and out of the Great Depression marched a wave of human progression. Put the shovels in our hands. We can take it. Send local boys across the land. The swamps and forests to reclaim We can take it Give us America's wilds to tame We weren't even 20 Some came in at 16 Didn't need money or degree Just an interview for the CCC They asked, are you robust? Are you crabby? Optimistic and happy One out of every five got to stay their families a dollar a day take off your clothes boys show your tough medical exam in the buff two pairs of shoes two trousers two shirts underwear and a cap for work nothing fit two sizes too big but you didn't complain not worth it to quit Oh, 
600 hours, trumpet blows you out of a sack. 200 men in a mad dash, latrine and wash, shower and shave, single file to breakfast. Eat what you take, enough food to gain 10 pounds at least. Never at home have I had such a feast. Daybreak in the barracks, truck to the field, eight hours of labor, return piecemeal. After dinner, after work, take a class. takes we can take it build dams bridges and miles of road we can take it earn five dollars send 25 home we didn't live in palaces at the college of colossal calluses three and a half million men reclaimed the plains and groomed the land roosevelt's tree army Trees. We were stocked a billion fish to streams, controlled mosquitoes and disease, drained a quarter million acres of swamp, cut 28,000 trails to Trump, built 100,000 miles of road, strung just as much line for the telephone, campgrounds, buildings, 800 state parks, carry the CCC trademark. Back when I was in high school, and I'm giving away my age here, that was the dawn of the Lilith Fair, and there were all of these incredible female singer-songwriters writing original music and um, getting up on stage and sharing it, uh, and sharing the stage with other performers like them. Uh, and that that blew my mind when I saw that and heard that. Um, I was 25 when I started writing my own songs, um, and most singer-songwriters who who I had heard of had started when they were in high school or when they were 12 writing their first songs. But when I started writing at 25, those were the influences that seemed to be filtering through me again, those uh, amazing singer-songwriters. Do they pay when you're sick in bed? No. So 
So pay the doctor ahead. Buy a lumberjack ticket for one dollar or five. Free health care at the hospital, and you're sure to come back alive. When a log crushed a man with a crack, men stopped and stared jaw slack. Sister took lead and made the men heed and save the lumberjack. When the state took a new tack, workers come for every hack. Our nun went home and remained loved and known as Sister Lumberjack. Who put it all matter of fact? Buy health tickets quick before you get sick and keep your family intact. Several ton logs in an axe, your muscles overtaxed. You could lose a hand in a massive log jam or cut a finger. Infection can linger out of work in a flash. You'll soon be out of cash. Do they pay when you're sick in bed? So pay the doctor ahead. Buy a lumberjack ticket for one dollar or five. Free health care at the hospital, and you're sure to come back alive. Free health care at the hospital, and you're sure to come back alive. Free health care at the hospital, and you're sure to come back alive. Free health care at the hospital. Another song from my show, Oive is Jewish for Ufta, is about a really interesting situation that happened when Jewish immigrants moved into Devil's Lake, North Dakota. The Jewish immigrants in the late 19th and early 20th century had just come, and they hadn't yet had a chance to build a synagogue as a place of worship. And the high holy days were coming around, and all the Jewish farmers from miles around were needing a place to worship. And they made an arrangement with the Devil's Lake community to borrow the county courthouse as the synagogue, which they continued for a few years in a row. And I loved the idea of a courthouse becoming a synagogue in cooperation among the community. And so this song is about that. This is called Courthouse Synagogue. I remember the sound most of all a wide warm well of song hebrew prayers in the jewelry box lawyer's table in a white tablecloth the rabbi spoke from the judge's bench the torah stood in the witness stand the sound of hebrew prayers rang over the courthouse chairs. From house of justice to house of worship, secular to Jewish, civic to secret, the community of devils late gave up their courthouse for our high holidays. He wouldn't set fall trial dates Till they spoke to Herman Morris or Jake On Rosh Hashanah we'd move our portable ark From the Goldberg's house to the courtroom bar A faraway rabbi would travel in We always hoped for a man who could sing When the courthouse was a synagogue The only one judge in the room was God From house of judges to house of worship, secular to Jewish, civic to secret, the community of devils, they gave up their courthouse for our high holidays. The Jews would come from miles around, leaving their farms to come and worship in town. We never knew how many would come there had to be accommodation for everyone the ladies planned while the service went on to count all the guests and divvy them up each family knew which guests were there they'd invite them over to dinner after prayers from house of justice to house of worship secular to jewish civic to sacred the community of devils they gave up their courthouse for our high holidays. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm originally from New York. Try that again. I love to write songs about real things that happened and real people in history. And generally, the subject I. This, okay. Young Jewish girl, Russian okay, guys, I'm sorry. It's really hard to look right there. No, I can do better. We can do better. We can express this better. And you can find me on the web at www.elisakaren.com. Funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public.